The following is a presentation of the Force Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy, this is the Force Center podcast feed. And this particular episode of the Force Center podcast feed is a deep dive. We're going to talk about hope. I am Joseph Scripton. I am Ken Napsuck, hoping that you are all ready to discuss hope in Star Wars. It's a pretty big theme. It's in the titles, it's in the lines, it's in the dialogue, and it's in the heart of this saga we love. We're ready to dive in. But before we do, we want to remind you that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. And we're going to recommend an audiobook right now, Joseph, that we feel everyone should try on us. That's right. This is a book that's got a lot of hope in it in the actions, and I imagine the word is said. I didn't do a full scan to double check and count the hopes, but we recommend checking out Resistance Reborn by Rebecca Rowanhorse. It was a book that was leading up to Rise of Skywalker, and uh, you know, I took a lot of photos. Uh, I sometimes do this. I take photos of specific quotes uh, so I can kind of look back at them later, and we did our big breakdown, but it's really fun to find some of those images of lines from this book on my phone uh, now that Rise of Skywalker has actually come out and look back on it in a different context. We both really enjoyed that book, so we're suggesting you check it out to download your free audiobook today. Go to audibletrial.com slash center. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash center for your free audiobook. Uh, so before we dive in, we, we just want to pull the curtain back on reality. Uh, mm-hmm. I think our long-term listeners uh, probably know our recording schedule. We record some different times, but for the most part, it's Monday morning, Monday afternoon on the West Coast. Uh, We sit down at our separate computers and separate microphones, and we record our news and cues episode, and we usually record this episode, the deep dive episode. So we are recording this on Monday, November 2nd, 2020, and then we're releasing it on November 4th, 2020. So uh, did I get those dates right? No, November 5th, 2020, right? That's how math works. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) indeed let me pull the curtain back to basic math uh the point that i'm trying to make here is we are recording it in a a very uncertain time in america uncertain time in the world uh we recognize that there is always the the possibility of uh of things being difficult things being challenging things being unknown and we recognize that everybody in times like that uh, where there can be a lot of uncertainty or a lot of anxiety or a lot of uh, stress or, or conflict that they need something that Star Wars provides and that is hope. So we want to acknowledge that we don't, as we're recording this, we don't know <laughs> what world it's going to be released into, uh, but we thought hope would be a good idea to talk about regardless. Uh, what do you have to say about uh, that, Ken? I think hope is pretty evergreen <laughs> <laughs> it's never yeah. a bad time for hope right never a bad time for hope uh, star wars came out of uh, a pretty tumultuous period i would say not even out of it was still in that tumultuous period i i don't think the the world ever went back to kind of the pre vietnam nixon era or even the pre uh, Kennedy 60s era, like, you know, um, it, it, it changed forever back then. And that's what Lucas was telling his story in. And his contemporaries were maybe telling uh, the same kind of stories in a, in a different, uh, you know, that term gritty, but more realistic, uh, uh, you know, uh, thought provoking films of the 70s. That's what a lot of stuff was going on in that era. We know Lucas wanted to get his hands on Apocalypse Now. He and Gary Kurtz and a bunch of people were looking to make that after New Hope. Instead, you know, what ends up happening, what Lucas's legacy is, is this modern myth and all the things we've we've talked about describing what Star Wars is uh, to tell this story of how your choices can affect you and how they can damage you or those around you and how uh, sometimes things are dark. But at the end of it is a a light that you can go towards and a light that is there for you. And, And that's why hope is so powerful in Star Wars. And it is evergreen, but this week, again, just no matter what it is, it's just, it's tense and it's tough. And the road to get here has been tense and has been tough and tumultuous. And so hope, always a good thing and and, and a great time to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. And I love how you're connecting it back to just why Star Wars exists at all. 
from my perspective and opinion and life experience, I think that there was, uh, while I like a, a ton of storytelling, you know, throughout uh, 50s, 60s, uh, all that, that there was a tendency to let's put on a musical where things work out. And then the 70s really pushed back on that and like, let's be honest about some of the problems in culture. Let's be honest about some of the darkness in humanity. And I think for Lucas to kind of go on that roller coaster ride himself and go, hey, yeah, you know what? All my contemporaries, I love these dark, gritty films that really boil down to let's stop kidding ourselves and let's look honestly at how rough things are. And mm -hmm. Lucas looked at those films and said, yes, agree with that, love that, but also people need something to hope for. People need something to aspire to. It's not enough to just state things are rough. You also have to give people inspiration and hope to make them better. And I think the existence of Star Wars is the existence of hope in, in this conversation of uh, in films, in how we actually talk about our world. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I just uh, hear, you know, because I think growing up in, in the eighties and, you know, here I'm young and I'm not even, you know, eighties again, every day, de every decade's probably been tumultuous, but you know, we just, you're just so aware of it from the seventies on in my, in my view. Yeah. As someone who has watched uh, all the uh, decade documentaries there are to watch on Netflix or anything. Uh, <laughs> no, it's been that way, but, but um, Star Wars, you, you don't, you don't initially connect it to that, right? Because it is the way George approached it. And I think there's great value in that. Not that it's sneaking in some sort of message. The message is pretty clear. George has his clear thoughts on certain things and and regimes and political candidates and whatnot. He very clearly does, but he chooses to to focus on how how can you get through this and how can you change this and how can you stop this. Uh, we're going to go with this spiritual kind of mythical storytelling, and that's why it works and and it, it grabs you in many different ways, uh, and it all centers on hope. Yeah, yeah, very well said. Uh, the first one of this episode, how many will there be a fun game to play? Uh, hopefully we will say lots of things well, huh? I'm always hoping, yes. You're right. <laughs> hoping, hoping. Oh, it slips in everywhere. So we're going to dive into this idea of hope. We're going to look at it, uh, how it uh, is in Star Wars in lots of different ways in the first half. And then because it's so central in the second half of our episode, we're going to look at its uh, specific journey of hope in the sequel trilogy. So obviously, hope core theme of Star Wars goes all the way back to one of the most famous lines of the first movie, then the retroactive title of the first movie itself. And it goes on to have even more weight, I think, as different filmmakers look back and, and analyze the power of the original trilogy for films like Rogue One in the sequel trilogy. So uh, we're going to dive into hope and start, I think, really at the beginning. What is the power to you, Ken, of Leia saying, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only Hope. That's what really kicks off the adventure. And that idea of hope, that expression of hope becomes a famous line right away. What's the power of it to you? I'll tell you what, it's gotten more powerful over time. Uh, and I think there's, I don't want to say desperation, like Leia and the Rebellion's just clamoring and, and, and trying to grab onto anything, right? I, I don't mean that, but there, the, there's power in the fact that this is it. Or it's nothing, right? In their mind, that may not be true. And Obi Wan's got some lessons to teach, uh, on, uh, specifically Luke, on that, which I think Luke then tries to teach the galaxy uh, years later in Episode Eight. But you know, there's like, there's, it's pretty moving to, for to get to that point where you're like, I need this to happen, or I need to, you know, you need to get involved, or, or this is all gone. And uh, to get to that point, uh, it, it, the stakes couldn't be higher at the start of this movie at the start of this story as the saga rolls out in front of us uh in, in this release order right i mean and even if you're watching one two and three and then you go to four or you throw in rogue one like it has that sense of all or nothing and there's a lot of pressure on kenobi <laughs> which again i think episode eight's trying to comment on uh heroes and legends and different conversation but that moves me. It, it moves me. And then I've talked about this. I think we did on the layup. So, but you know, hearing Carrie Fisher, you all can go to that tribute on, on star Wars official YouTube channel of when she passed away at Orlando star Wars, when she does the line, cause she has the line, she had the lines memorized her entire life. And she does a more modern version of it during the force awakens promotional run. And she slows it down and she gets really emotional, almost gets tears in her eye kind of, uh, you know, saying, help me, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. It really, to me, 
go with me here, Joseph. It <laughs> drove the home, drove the point home of of that speech in that hologram. It drove it home in a way I never felt, which is why it moves me. And 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 it's weird to say this, but a big Beatle fan and the song "Help" is just this big famous pop song. And it's three chords and and not even it's three chords in an emotional truth, right? But it's like <laughs> the bouncy Beatles song from a different era. But that was never what Lennon intended it. And I was in attendance at an Oasis concert in 1998 where Noel Gallagher did a, a, a broken hearted acoustic version of it. And I just remember being removed by a song I'd grown up with because it got to the course. And so hearing Carrie Fisher years later do that whole monologue again, but slow it down and maybe add in some more like help me. You're my only hope. I, I just, it made me look back at what she had said and be like, this is everything. That is such a powerful moment for her, for, for Obi-Wan. It's an indicator of what he's, Oh, my, my time's uh, here. We, here we go. My, I'm up. <laughs> I'm up. And the rebellion. Anyways, sorry, big passionate speech for me in the beginning, but I, I love that moment. It means everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I have to say it well said. Uh, yeah. And I, I think there is, we, we kind of can't stop, talking about generational power in mm -hmm. uh in star wars and that's a lot what's going on here as we'll talk about but that's really great to hear you even reflect on the generational power in your life of hearing a song one way and then hearing it with a greater depth slowed mm -hmm. down uh mm -hmm. and with similar themes right uh, yep. the song help <laughs> yeah yeah i think you know you can look at this moment now with the context we have of rogue one and, and we get to viscerally know and experience all the hope and all the sacrifice that has got Leia as far as she has. But even without that, you sit down to watch just Star Wars, not even A New Hope yet, just Star Wars in 1977, and you know she's being chased. You know she's being captured. You know she doesn't even have, like, a great weapon. She just has the plans for a weapon, you know? Mm -hmm. And that she needs to get them uh, to this old hero. Um, the stakes are already there of like i i can't complete my mission i i failed to get to you please i hope i hope that this droid gets to you and you can complete my mission for me um it is already like high stakes mm -hmm. and then you're really looking at it from all right this is the the this modern myth and it starts with a trope of fantasy and a trope of myths of a princess who is begging a hero to save her who is begging a knight to reclaim his sword one more time and save her. And that has weight and power all by itself of, oh, this is the kind of story we're telling. It's a princess who, who is hoping the knight will save her. And then both of those things by the end of the film get subverted of like, sure, Leia needs help like we all do, but she's not the damsel in distress, right? She is the princess who is like, as soon as she gets let out of the cell block, is like, you idiots have no idea how to save me. I'll tell you how. I'll show you how. Let's go. So, yeah that trope is set up and you, you get the value of it and it's immediately subverted by the film. Uh, and, and there's yeah. the power of that of Leia at the beginning of the film saying, you're my only hope. And by the end of the film, you're like, uh, th mm -hmm. that woman is her own hope too. Uh, yeah. And then we have that power uh, of Obi-Wan. Of yeah. Obi-Wan is watching this and not only is it his moment of like, I'm being asked to come out of retirement and do something, but you know, we get, you know, we do get it in the first film because he, you know, passes on as the mentor. He gives the the sword to Luke. But with all the additional storytelling, we get the power of him hearing that and knowing where Leia's coming from of, hey, and I really need help. You're my only hope. And him knowing, no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I've been sitting here 19 years because I think this kid sitting next to me, this young kid is the hope. I think you, Leia, are the hope. You know, not the literal chosen one, but mm -hmm. you the Skywalker twins. We did everything to protect and save you because you two are the new hope. And having that immediately, the first instance of hope in Star Wars is, you know, just explicitly generational where mm. we think Obi-Wan is the hope. We think he is the knight who's going to rescue the damsel in distress. And only all those things are only true from a certain point of view because it's Luke and Leia who are, who are the new hopes. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's and that's just the start from one speech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we covered a lot of ground with that. Uh, the power of that one line. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's let's move on to the actual title. So the title, "A New Hope," was added for the film's theatrical re-release in 1981. What do you think of the title of "A New Hope"? Is Luke 
the new hope to you? That's the uh, straightforward, probably what Lucas would say, probably what Lucas may have said explicitly in an interview at some point. Or do you expand it more when you hear a new hope? I 100% expand it more. I really do. I, but and, and obviously it can be both. Uh, I think it is very specific. And and Luke gets that that hope, uh, especially, you know, chosen one prophecies. And like you said, Lucas probably would say, yeah, no, that's Luke's Luke's new hope. All right. Thanks. Um, <laughs> that would be it. But but yeah, no, clearly, if, if you watch that movie um, with what's going on, you don't even have to have seen Rogue One solo, read the novels, or grown up with them. Just watch watch that movie from the crawl. Uh, and to the end, it, it takes it takes a village, takes a Yavin four, <laughs> and it truly is everybody. Yeah, it 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 begs to be expanded. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think the the power of it is definitely the title itself is commenting on Leia's line of her mm-hmm. saying, "You know, help me, Obi Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope." And the title is actually it's it's time for that generation to pass. You know, it's time mm-hmm. for a new hope. It's like a direct commentary uh, on Leia's line. I think. Yeah. Um, and I think it is very directly Luke in terms of at least, you know, uh, a new hope. He's the one who uh, picks up the saber. He's the one who blows up the Death Star. But yeah, absolutely. None of this would be happening if Leia hadn't been keeping the flame alive. If Leia's, you know, none of this would have happened if Leia hadn't gone on this mission. If Leia wouldn't stop at anything uh, to deal with her own trauma of losing her parents, losing her planet, and just keep fighting, keep going. So of course she is uh, the new hope, even if she wasn't you know, uh, of the great Skywalker lineage and had that power too. She has this other power of just absolute uh, uh, resilience and hope. Uh, and I also just think A New Hope also speaks to like the era, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, if you do watch the films in chronological order and you go through the journey with the uh, Anakin and the, his fall and the Jedi's fall and the galaxy's fall, A New Hope really is like, look, uh, the galaxy's been through some rough time. The hero's lost. But it, it, that's never just the end of the story. There can be a new hope, this new spirit of uh, rebellion that's represented by Luke uh, and Leia and Han turning back and joining the fight. That's a new hope, you know, at the uh, end of the film. And there's just like an era of new hope. And I think that goes along with just like that uh, wide eyed thrill of adventure. And that spirit that's that's in this film is is kind of just the the feeling of hope in that. Uh, old Obi-Wan, old Ben Kenobi held on to hope and now in this movie he's passing it on and there's a new generation of hope. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it's so, and it's so fun. Yeah. Uh, gosh, you know, it's so, I was thinking if 1, 2, and 3 had come out first and then uh, in 99 we got episode 4, what, all the all the comments would have been like, ah, but I wanted uh, Obi-Wan to be the hero. Um, but, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm glad we didn't have to deal with that. But yeah, yeah, this truly is... Uh, I'm thinking of Leia at the end of, of A, you know, we have everything we need. It's like, she knows that she's started to learn that from this very moment on, you know, uh, this is, it's all there. This generation, it's got it. Every generation, uh, your, it's your chance in, uh, to lead and go forward with hope. Yeah, exactly. Um, I hope, I'm also just fascinated by the title, A New Hope, because, uh, you know, as we said, it was retroactively, uh, put on the film in 1981, uh, how would we read the saga differently? Would we read it differently if the title of that first movie was a little bit more uh, bombastic and, and full of energy? Like, it's definitely the most gentle of all the titles, right? Mm, it's <laughs> you know, lyrical, yeah. It's, the, it's lyrical, and it's the title that doesn't speak to... It speaks to the theme. Uh, other ones speak to themes as well, but it, it's, it's you know, this is a new hope out of all of them is the one that could be a, a candle scent, right? You know, <laughs> there's something... <laughs> Uh, right there's something just a little bit more gentle about it because it wasn't ever it was never a part of the marketing the film had already been successful enough to be re-released multiple times before it was applied you know and and, and many people still just call it star wars uh rather than a new hope but how would we feel if uh if the title was something more like fires of rebellion or spark of the jedi or flight of skywalker or something that's a little bit more action oriented like the other titles. So basically what you're telling me is we got um, a Yankee candle flavor, a new hope or drink <laughs> names at, at Chili's or red Robin. Uh, it was great. I've had too many <laughs> fires of rebellion and a flight of skywalkers. will put you right under the table. Right under the table. I, this is a great question, Joseph. This is a great observation. Um, you know, empire strikes back. We know that that's, that's uh, it's same with attack of the clones. That's Lucas at his fifties, uh, uh, 
can't be best, Return of the Jedi, Revenge of the Jedi. Bombastic's a great way to describe a lot of those other titles. Um, it would have changed everything. Uh, you know, Fires of Rebellion is a, is a, it's great. That's a great novel I want to read. I, I, I think it would have made for a different, different film. I think he's smart to have named that A New Hope at some point. And, and rechristened it. Uh, and I get it. And we can make all the, well, back in my day, it was just called Star Wars. I make those jokes too. I'm glad it's called A New Hope. I have no problem referring to it as A New Hope. I don't, I don't hold to some weird old, I grew up, uh, you know, in, in the 80s and, and we called it Star Wars. Well, that's a great catchy title for a movie they thought would not do well. You know? <laughs> uh huh. A New Hope would not have worked as well as Star Wars. Got it. Good. The marketing's in the title. But A New Hope is, it's, Actually, might be one of my uh, maybe my favorite title. Last, I like the Last Jedi. There's, you know, that Le- Legends novel had that too as well. But A New Hope might be my favorite of the titles. Yeah, and I, I think there is meaning in all the titles of the the mm-hmm. cycle of violence and and you know the, the the verbs are important: attack and revenge and return and, and rise. They're they're, they're all important. Uh, awakens is super important. Um, it, it, the Phantom Menace is full of meaning, but there, this one is, I think, because it did not need to be thrilling it, because it was, uh, you know, put on afterwards. In some ways, it is the most thematic. It is the most it, it crystallizes how important hope is as a theme. And, it, and in a way, it really, since the film already existed, is able to retroactively talk to that line of Leia's where you think Obi-Wan is the hope, but actually it's time for a new hope. And, uh, you know, thinking about it from the conversation we were having about how uh, Star Wars A New Hope (laughs) exists in the history of film in that I think Lucas really did intend it to be a new hope of like, great, we know how rough reality is. Here's a new hope. Here's a story for people to aspire to. So I'm going to name the film (laughs) what it is, what I intend it to be for culture. Yeah. And look, and and, and all roads and all all paths and all uh, conspiracy strings on a, on a map all on, on a, on a, on a wall, all lead back to this movie and this title. Like th- this is why it's, we're talking about it today. It is the center of the saga. And so that's why I think it, it in the end of the day, it's such a great name for me. Yeah, so, absolutely. Fires of rebellion. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm there for it's, it's a drink. I want a galaxy's edge too, but yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Flight of Skywalker. Yeah. I, you know, I don't, I don't think that's the greatest title, uh, but I would like A Flight of Skywalkers. I, I appreciate you pointing that out. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on in our conversation of hope, uh, I think Leia is often really seen as the torchbearer of hope in the original trilogy and the sequel trilogy in uh, particular. Uh, Leia is the resolute character. Leia is the steadfast character who always keeps going and never questions her path. She questions her uh, feelings about Han and whether she can... Uh, kind of let that side of her truth of her humanity be expressed or if she needs to just stay focused on the rebellion but she never wavers uh from the rebellion and the hope that the rebellion can defeat the empire uh and then the sequel trilogy we'll talk about in depth but she is explicit about hope uh in the sequel trilogy who Hmm. do you think carries the torch of hope in the prequels is it padme obi-wan yoda dexter jetster who's got the hope you, we always make a Dexter reference because you and I love Dexter. He's got a lot of hope that you'll find out the truth. Uh, you know, he wants, <laughs> he wants to, look, it's Padme. It's Padme. You know, Obi-Wan got some, but even he, you know, he it's Dash. Yoda's uh, kind of too busy wondering if they've misread things. Mace, his only hope is that, you know, uh, is, is everyone seeing what I'm seeing? Nope. Okay, we're doomed. Um, it's Padme. She carries hope all the way to the very end and even in death still has the hope. It still tells Obi-Wan there's still good in him. You know, she dies uh, with, you know, hope. Yeah. with hope. Yeah. With hope. And I, you know, and again, in, insert your critiques of, of how they handle Padme and Revenge of the Smith, Sith and uh, valid and valid, but we're, we're dealing with the story as presented. She, she, she carries it to the end, man. She's got it all on all fronts too, politically, war what went wrong how we can get out of it even in the face of of no one listening to her uh she carries it to the end man she she is hope yeah yeah i think uh that padme definitely carries the hope and i think the since the prequels aren't really about hope they're about uh uh darkness they're about you know uh fear and falling 
uh, mm -hmm. in giving into things that, uh, that it's not, you know, as explicit, uh, but Padme is absolutely a symbol of hope. I think that it's, it's interesting to think of hope from the, the Padme perspective in the prequels, because Padme is the character who does have her foot on the gas. Like certainly, uh, Phantom Menace, she is the character who is saying, no, I won't accept this. I, this is unacceptable. It doesn't matter how uh, small the chances are. I'm going to find my way to a political solution. Oh, the political solution doesn't work. Then I'll find another way because I this is not acceptable. And then even when we get to attack the clones, she's kind of the, the target. Uh, her character is what instigates uh, the surface level plot of attack of the clones uh, to begin with. And she kind of won't sit still for it. She's the one who not only has more accurate ideas of what's actually going on, but, you know, she's she's got hope to to find peace. She's going back to Coruscant uh, to, for this incredibly important vote on not raising an army because she thinks that is not the the right way that you should sit down and uh, come to terms with the separatists and figure out, oh, what's bothering them and why and talk it through. She doesn't know that it's being manipulated by Dooku, but she's got that hope. And the, even she's just always so proactive. Everything that comes in front of Padme, she's like, well, let's figure it out. Like even down to Anakin's like, well, I had a dream about my mother, but I'm supposed to stay here. And, and she's like, no, let's go. <laughs> and he's, Obi-Wan's in trouble, but I, I should stay here. And it's like, no, let's go. <laughs> yeah. She's always let's go. And I think there's something powerful about that, that hope is forward moving. And it's a great contrast to a lot of our other heroes in the prequels who are really about trying to maintain the status quo. The Jedi are trying to hold on to uh, the, the peace and justice that they've known in the ways they've known. And Padme is really the one who is looking at every fresh problem going, great, let's move forward and let's address it. Yeah, I mean, look, she, we, you and I always talk about Padme being positioned as kind of the true enemy or the true thorn in the side of Palpatine all through the Clone Wars animated series and even going back to Phantom Menace where even if he's always, uh, you know, maneuvering and, and out guessing the guesses against him, like she, she does some things that he just can't account for a lot. And, and I see it as he, he is the shroud of darkness over all the light in the galaxy. And she is that ray of hope fighting, fighting to, to shine through. And, and I think that's, uh, it's one of the reasons why we, we here consider Padme just so important. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a really great way to put it. You could break down the plots of all three films in a, uh, there's a lot going on in the prequels, but on some level, the plots are, you know, uh, Sidious is trying to uh, break people with fear and darkness. And Padme's always like, Hey, but what if, I, <laughs> what if I shine a little light over here? Like even down to Revenge of the Sith, which uh, I do wish had more Padme and was more Padme centric. I agree with some of those concerns. Um, but we still have her just saying like, I won't just accept, you know, that Anakin has fallen, I will go and try to make a difference, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and as you point out, hope, holding on to hope right until the very end. And, and look, and when, when, when she is extinguished, uh, look what happens to the galaxy. I, you know, I'm not saying, you know, it's, it, I am kind of saying that, you know, she, what she, what she represented and, and, and Palpatine knew she needed to, knew, to, knew, knew, knew he needed to get her kind of off the, 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 the plane board to really trap Anakin so when he succeeds, darkness completely falls over that galaxy. So I am saying it's that important. Why am I backing off? It's that important. She's that yeah. important. I don't know if this is what you're thinking, but I think there's the, you know, uh, I don't think we are saying like she's actually the mystical keeper of the wills of hope, like nothing right, right, right. in canon mystical. But I think from uh, Lucas's perspective, I, I think that is, well, I won't speak for Lucas, but from my interpretation of it, it really is saying like when people like Padme are stopped, that's when hope dies. When people who are proactive and say, let's look for a solution. Let's listen. Let's not accept uh, the worst case scenario. Let's not accept the darkness. When those people are silenced, that's when you're done. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Along those lines, do you think uh, hope in any way could have saved Anakin from falling to the dark side? A hundred percent, hundred percent. This is, this is his fall is so, so emotional. And it's so just uh, comes from a real, real on, uh, you know, you understand where he's coming from as a kid coming up. And, and I've just been really, really analyzing um, the, the fall of Anakin from a spiritual sense versus growing up and thinking, yeah, he fell to the dark side, became a bad guy and hacked and slashed. And that's cool. And, you know, part of that is cool. 
I can't deny that. I like a good character in a, in a dark cape with a red blade. All right. I'm there for it too. But yes, it all comes down to if he had just been able to see past the next day of every day of his existence when it started to really fall apart. You know, I think he had some of it early on. It starts to fade slowly over time. By the time we see him in Tech of Clones, it's getting, it's getting cloudy. It's getting cloudy. Um, and even, you know, falling in love with Padme isn't the easy answer because that almost complicates things more. And then the war, and then you see from the Clone Wars animated series, you see what he starts to become. It, 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 is, it is panic. Sometimes to me, this is very general. Please listen. I'm very general. But sometimes lack of, of hope is just born out of just a, a, a paranoia panic of, of today is, is the end. Today is we're going to fall and today is where it all goes wrong. And that might be true. But just as Wilson, as the sages Wilson Phillips once saying, hold on for one more day. And, and quite right, if Anakin had been able to see not to Monday, but to, but to Tuesday, he would have thought, okay, we can get through this and we can figure this out versus I need to make a decision right here, right now out of out of panic out of out of attachment out of out of uh that destructive those destructive things fear oh yeah fear that word Yo, that's <laughs> that's um that's why he falls to me so i think a little bit of hope i think i think could have helped yeah yeah i love everything you're saying i love that anakin starts with such hope right it's literally hope of like oh you uh the the jedi and and padme uh you're you're trapped here and you really need to get back to the super important galactic uh the center of the galaxy coruscant well i've never won a pod race before but i really would think i can <laughs> i think i can squeak this one out and we even get that pointed out where padme's even like you you haven't even finished one before but he's got hope uh yeah. And, you know, he and I think hope is that ingredient that you need to start. Right. Uh, and, it, and it pays off and he loses that over time for all these different reasons. But I think by the time we get to Revenge of the Sith and the real crux of his final fall, it is uh, hope versus fear. And I'm thinking about that, about Star Wars is uh, a story of hope versus fear more and more of it, with Anakin in particular in this moment is hope and fear are both ways that we see the future. Mm -hmm. And if the vision is coming from the force itself, if the vision is coming uh, from Palpatine, if the vision is coming out of uh, Anakin's own anxieties, whatever it is, he sees this vision of Padme dying. And instead of reacting to it with any hope without, with saying, I know it's really scary but if I keep this, this flicker of hope alive, maybe I can find a, a good solution. Maybe, maybe I can have hope that, um, that if I talk to Obi-Wan about this, he'll be able to really help me understand this uh, vision. Maybe if I really let uh, Padme in on, on a deeper level, we can figure this out. Or I have hope that it will work out. But he doesn't have any of that. He just has fear. And, and I think that's such the big lesson of his fall is... He has moments of trauma where he's reacted to a thing that has happened, like uh, his mom dying, which is tragic. Uh, yeah. But his ultimate fall is fear of not being able to control what will happen. Mm. And that is just so giving in to just darkness. Whereas the hopeful version is, I am very legitimately concerned about that bad thing that could happen. So I'm going to choose hope over fear and I'm going to choose to try to do everything I can and believe that there's a possibility that the worst thing won't happen if I find a good and honest way to to prevent it or or to make it better. But instead, he just chooses like it's going to happen for sure. Yeah. And that's yeah. what he reacts to. He reacts to fear. Yeah, he, he makes he, he makes the choice for life if that makes sense like uh this could go bad oh i'm gonna let i'm gonna say that yep it went bad um, um but here i want to say you know the le the big lesson too i love i love what you're saying hope versus fear like that that really is the star wars story and therefore when, when you got yoda saying you know the dark side is a quicker path right i mean that's just that's just saying all of us it's so much easier to give into fear so much uh, easier to um, you know, believe the bad stuff. Yeah, of course it is. You know, 
Hell, that's advice from the movie Pretty Woman. The, the bad stuff is easier, easier to believe. Yeah, and that and that's why it, it we're not saying it's easy in our talks about uh, Star Wars and, and if you want to take them into the real world, it isn't it? It isn't like, gee, if Anakin had only chosen hope, he would have been okay. Geez, come on, man. Uh, it's 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 hard. It's hard, and that's kind of what I think George is also putting out there too back in the day, and what carries on into the modern to the modern stories, uh, particularly with Ray, I, I am moved often by the, the, the power behind her choices uh, in the face of so much. Uh, and, and she could have easily just slumped her shoulders and given into it. Um, like Anakin before, like Kylo did too, as well. Um, yeah. It, it's not, it's not, it's not easy. And, and that's kind of the point uh, of it all. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's what it, what makes the hero so heroic is yeah, it, 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 fear is really easy to go give into because if there are bad things happening, you're just like, yeah, bad things are going to happen. You're right. <laughs> yeah. And and you're sort of absolving yourself. And hope is this really scary thing where you're like, I might not be able to fix this or prevent this or make this better, but I have to try. You know, it, yeah. it's putting so much responsibility on yourself um, mm -hmm. and the possibility of failure and rejection and pain. Yeah, which also, by the way, is why I love, I love Star Wars needs to, it doesn't need to have a happy ending. Clearly, Revenge of the Sith doesn't type of thing. But hear me out. You're like, I, I'm all for the shades of gray in Westeros. I'm all for Nolan giving me a, a gritty Batman trying to figure it all out. Uh, I, I'm all for hearing the Joker and go, oh, maybe the Joker's got some points. I'm all for that. Because <laughs> that's life. And, and But I like that Star Wars... Like you and I often say, you know, Qui-Gon uh, chooses the light because the light is there. I love that Star Wars itself, the characters, uh, you know, choose hope, choose light because it's there. And it, and 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 we can be inspired from that. I, I, I'm glad. That's why I reject Grey Jedi on so many levels. I reject it because it doesn't need to be here in this story. That, that yeah. undercuts the power of what the story of Star Wars is. No, yeah, I, I completely agree. And I think fear and hope is one of those dichotomies that really drives that home of like, mm -hmm. hope is not, does not ignore darkness. Hope is there because of darkness, you know? Ooh, that's good. Put that on shirt. <laughs> Put that on shirt. Well, speaking of putting in things on shirt, uh, let's move on to Rogue One because Rogue One's got some great things to put on shirts. Uh, Rogue One introduces the phrase, rebellions are built on hope. Uh, do you think that's a Cassian Andor original? Did he come up with that one? Or is it a common phrase in the rebellion? Uh, he says it to Jen, and then, of course, Jen says it to the council uh, and, and gets all the credit for it. Um, <laughs> how do you feel like... Sorry. <laughs> People are always like, what? come on, but Cassian, come on. Um, how do you feel about that line, about it's like, what does it feel like to you when you hear it in the film of the history of that? Is that something that Cassian thought of in the moment? Is that a mantra? Where do you think it comes from? I I love Cassian Andor so much that I, I, I would love to think that that's something that he said in that moment almost, you know, because it's at some point someone says it for the first time. So why not him? Um, I, I think, you know, the rebellion has been around enough that I, I imagine someone else could have said it and it's just kind of, he says it and then Jin says it and, and suddenly, um, she's the one who's in the uh, book of quotes and Richard Lewis is going, but I, I created it. Uh, that, <laughs> that is a deep cut Richard Lewis lore, uh, reference. So I like that idea, but I also, I don't like, especially maybe in the upcoming casting series, maybe we'll hear it, you know? Maybe it'll be from someone else. As much as I love Amon Mothma, and she, she's earned the right to be the character that's created that or comes up with that. Jan Dodan has been through a lot. M Medine, Akbar, any Rykan, any of the leaders of the rebellion. Leia could have said that. Bail Organa. I love that. I love that Cassian Andor would be the one that was credited, that could be credited with it. And, and it's the first one that we hear because he is on the ground of this. He's been, as he says, in the fight since he was six, seven years old. He had no choice. A, a true rebellion built on the ground, he had to find that hope. And so it's really organic. It's not a great uh, speech on the on a campaign trail or something like that, you know, which could be great and powerful and yay. But his his saying it is very, it's rusty. It's, it's a little dirty and he's done some things and it all feels into that. So I like that it could have come from him. And that's something until, until proven otherwise, I'll say it's his. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I like what you're saying. I, and I think to connect it to his line of, I've been in this fight since I was six years old. And, mm -hmm. you know, we know his arc in, in Rogue One. We'll see what his arc is in the television show, that he's done some things that he wish he didn't have to do in order uh, to, to get to this ultimate goal of freeing the galaxy from the tyranny of the Empire. But I think there's something super powerful about this line. And to me, I get the sense that he's providing this information that, has been a part of his life since he was six years old of yeah other people are able to just go on with their lives and the war and the sadness and the conflict and stuff like that that's kind of going on in the background for for them but for you it's every day for you you don't you're in danger today your parents are in danger today you don't have food you don't have a comfortable place to sleep today and what keeps you going always is hope that's what a rebellion is about because it's just fighting for that next chance for that next day. You were saying that uh, about Anakin, and I think that's what Cassian probably was raised in of next step, one more day, next step. And, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'm I, the initial conversation with Jin, you know, I'm not remembering every exact nuance of the scene or the dialogue, but I think it really is Jin kind of throwing back the typical kind of uh, uh, pessimist, like, you know, what, why is it that you think you can win? Like, you're just not being realistic. Uh, and him countering with that, like, well, actually, I've lived this way my entire life. That's what this whole thing is about. You need hope to just keep going. Rebellions are built on hope. Of course, every single thing I ever do is a desperate, <laughs> mm -hmm. low odds, high possibility it won't work. You're not coming up with some clever rhetorical gotcha that I've never thought of. Mm -hmm. Every day of my life is has been desperate odds. And the only way I've been able to keep going to be here on this day is hope. It's, it's all he's got. It's all he's got. And I mean that in the best way possible. It is the best motivator, inspirational thing and weapon. Hope is the best weapon Cassian Andor has got. Yeah, yeah. And then he manages uh, to pass it on to, to Jin. And uh, Jin gets to end up in the quote book. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all respect to Jen. In fact, let's talk about Jen. Uh, how do you think the idea of hope contributes to Jen's commitment to do something about the Death Star? She gets to that point where uh, where she makes the speech. She gives the evidence. She heard, you know, uh, all, all of the information from her father. She believes the threat is real and she believes the rebellion has to do something. And she runs into a bunch of naysayers there and then she's still committed. How, how do you think, how do you see hope being involved for Jin herself. I think you, you can, I immediately go to more personal levels with Jin. Uh, you know, the, the, it's so much stuff with father, that great reveal of, of the video for father uh, and, and the tears. I still think it's one of my, it's just one of my favorite moments in star Wars and all hats off to Felicity Jones uh, doing that. And then, and, and then even um, the rogue one novelization by Andrew, Alexander free, just kind of even, even adding more layers to a lot of, of her journey. Um, so I think it might start there, but I think, I think it's important because I think Jin does represent maybe the greater part of the galaxy and maybe, maybe us in a way, in a general sense out here, um, the line of, you know, looking up or if you don't look up and all that kind of stuff, but just in a general, general way, it, it, when, when, it, when she is faced with what the power of hope and what it can mean to someone like Cassie and, 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 and when she is, in that room, which is, we know, again, for the novel, and yep, yep, you don't always want to have to factor the that into your movie viewing. I understand that. But she's she's on that, she's facing down the leaders of the rebellion for a long time. It's 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 not a quick moment, right? And yeah. I think it, as, as she's there talking and kind of saying, hey, you know, this is happening. And my father said this. And there's this weapon exists. And you got your, your Noah Jabel's, uh, the, the bane of Joseph Scrimshaw's existence uh, <laughs> just going, I don't know. I think, I think that's some of the stuff that really starts to grab her. She's already in, she's already in the fight by then. Um, but you know what I mean? Like when, when, when they are all dashing what little hope people like Cassian have and Jin sees it and feels it because she had never previously looked up. I think that that is a giant motivator for her to, in the end, give up her life for it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's all great stuff. I think, yeah, being empowered, not only by what she's seen and experienced, but being empowered by hearing like 
uh, you're the rebellion in, in such a different point of view for her where she had that point of view that I think we can all probably relate to at different uh, points in our lives. We're like, look, the world's really hard. I've experienced horrible tragedy. I'm just trying to get on with my life, keep my head down. And then, you know, there, there are people who have strong opinions on both sides and they're fighting and they're causing all this chaos. Uh, she goes through this experience where she's really seen uh, how awful the empire is up close uh, mm -hmm. She has seen that the rebellion is not, you know, in the story of Star Wars, they're not just like the zealots on the other side. It's not team, you know, green mm -hmm. and team purple. It's the Empire is crushing the galaxy. And this is the small band who's trying to prevent it. And, you know, when she sees the rebellion for what they are and and gets in line with that view. And even then the rebellion's like too big, too scary. Mm -hmm. yeah, we could we could maybe even just pretend that yeah, Death Star's not real the death star nonsense a death star that mm. that really affects her uh to say no no you <laughs> cassian and and this the reality of this organization convinced me that what you were doing is right so could you actually do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> is, is pretty powerful uh perspective and i think also the you know the emotional connection um mm. and not only with her own life and her own journey but seeing that her father was put in this really impossible situation and still found a way to make hope out of that. You know, mm -hmm. not only did he design this flaw, but he took this huge risk uh, to get the word of it out and to see that her father, after having all of these years of, you know, uh, isolation and not knowing, knowing his wife is gone, not knowing what happened to his daughter, knowing that the whole galaxy uh, is going to see him as the architect of this horrific weapon of destruction and he still found hope yeah. i i think it's not just living up to like just like my dad worked hard and he did the thing and so i gotta continue my dad's legacy i think it's a little bit more about that he found hope despite every reason to not have hope i can pick up that torch yeah oh i, lo I love connected it to uh, the, the personal stuff going on with her too i i think yeah yeah it's 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 the the story of Jen, man. I, I it's it's really it's just really good. It's really good, man. It is. It is. Yeah. And then uh, so once she gets a uh, Cassian, uh, you know, on her side, and they leave, and that makes uh, Admiral Radis, uh, you know, uh, slap his flipper down, which we love, and and join the fight, and then the, you know everybody's like, all right, well then let's go. Uh, so the hope inspires hope. Uh, the speeches as they get ready uh, to fight on Scarif about we'll take the one chance and then the next chance as a real practical laying out of, you know, how hope works on a functional level. We'll hope we'll get this far. And then if we get that far, then we'll hope we can get to uh, the next step. So it is all pretty explicitly in the film about hope. Uh, and it's all really shown to us that, you know, the newly formed Rogue One and the Rebels are really facing uh, bad odds on Scarif. What do you take from that part of the story where it, it isn't lip service to hope? It isn't, you know, light a candle in your window and everything will work out. It's not passive hope. It's odds are very good we're all going to die, but let's cling to hope that we can get to the next step. How does that impact you, that it's actual storytelling? It, it is hope in action. You just said, not a lip service. Uh, I, you know, I'm, here's the thing. I, I am in the middle of doing this giant Game of Thrones rewatch for my podcast, Cash the Talk. And I always joke about it. I apologize for cross-referencing cross the shows. I, I really do because it's a Star Wars show. But, it, but a lot of things are popping up that are, that are moving me, inspiring me across all of these shows and movie things I watch. And, and, and a lot of times this idea comes up and Maester Eamon tells Jon Snow, you know, it, it, it's, it's so easy to serve when there's no cost to it. And so for even Jin to say, oh, I looked up, I got hope, let's go fight. Great. Now you're on the ground. Now you're on Scarif. And this again is the only thing. And you're going to keep taking the chances and you keep taking the chances and you're going to be inspired to do something. It's, it's true action. It's true action. And it doesn't go well, which, which I still think is, I love that choice. You know, we maybe had some other versions of, of the story and look what I wanted Jin to, to live and carry on and be part of the rebellion in the shadows. Like Hera is as a character, meaning like, you know, we have to work her into the story because she wasn't yeah. there in 77. Yeah. I would have loved same with Cassian. I love those characters, but the moment K2SO starts to die uh, and, and choice over programming and the cost starts to roll out, it, 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 the, the, it that, that makes the hope that they all have, just that much more powerful. It truly is hope in action. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I still think that we have in the general Star Wars conversation, uh, you know, every, everybody, of course, entitled to their opinion. We try to respect lots of different opinions. But when I see it bubble up of like, yeah, Disney Star Wars never takes any risk. I'm like, it's Disney and they slaughtered yeah. all of the main characters. I, I think that we should still, you know, give Rogue One credit always for uh, for making a, a big and bold choice. And I think it really does work because I think that's what gives it extra weight to say it's so easy for hope to feel like just a thing that we say and it becomes this empty platitude and rogue one does such a great job of showing no it's the, the odds are very small the challenge is extremely real and hope is what is allows these heroes to push through and make the actual movie a new hope possible uh and that they do pay a price for it, makes it very real and makes it not just like, see, when you hope everything works out, like hope is not hope is the beginning. It's not everything. And I think the the film really, uh, the sh- really, really shows that. And the other thing I'll say about it, kind of uh, going back to the um, the briefing scene and the hope versus fear. I think what I like about that is, you know, there there's the um, I believe Jen says, like, you know, when we turn away from, uh, you know, a, a, an enemy this great with this much power, that's going to be it. Either we do something now or, or that's it. And that's really the moment where you have to choose hope or fear, right? Yeah. And I don't think there's anybody who truly, truly doesn't, deep down their soul, believe death, the Death Star might be real or the Empire might do something like that. They've already formed a rebellion. They've got problems with the Empire, you know? This isn't, you know, a right. PTA meeting where the Empire kind of came up. They're a rebellion hiding on a remote moon, right? <laughs> but yeah. still, Vas Vaspar uh, and uh, Noor Jabel, they yeah. just don't want to believe because they're giving in to fear. Because it's, mm-hmm. like, I... I, I if we if if it's it's probably not real it's probably ridiculous come on let's be realistic and even if it is real like what what were we going to do if they have we don't have enough weapons it's, it's it, they're all given in to fear understandable fear on a certain level because it's, yeah. it is realistically terrifying and that's i think what makes the hope pop in rogue one in such a stark relief of like it, fear would be a lot easier fear is a more realistic <laughs> reaction but we're going to choose hope yeah. Um, yeah. And I also wanted to add, I, you know, earlier I said, I, you know, I, I, I love that Star Wars kind of deals with uh, quote unquote happy endings. I, I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing my own kind of point, but I like that it goes, as, goes to the light. Ro- Rogue One is, is slightly different than that. Um, but I, I think it works for me because in this movie, you take a little line from a crawl in a, in a, in a movie that many of us grew up with in our lives a couple different generations of Star Wars fans, right? Before 2016, we were so mm-hmm. familiar with striking from a, a hidden rebel base. This is the movie. This is kind of the, not, I won't say the one exception to the rule, but this is where I really like, like taking that and go, the the reason all these characters, it, the, the risk of choosing hope is this, is this story. This is what it can, can get you. They chose hope. They died. They died. Let's hope it's not in vain. Uh, and that's up to you and these characters to go forward with that hope. That uh, this movie adds weight to the choice of hope, and it adds complications and fears to the choice of hope in the stories, uh, especially going forward. But just as a Star Wars fan, in all the movies, even if it's a prequel to the prequel to the prequels, you see what it is just an example of of the cost of of, of potential cost of hope, the actual life and death cost of hope but uh if that makes sense i i want to clarify that too yeah anyone says you said you like happy endings uh, in star wars can i do <laughs> i also love rogue one so much because of that well you're making me question you know uh, i'm not going to say rogue one is a happy ending when we meet all these awesome amazing characters and and they all give their lives uh <laughs> but you're making me question you know our response to it of it is, of course, a tragedy. It is, of course, sad uh, that these characters die. Uh, they don't make it off Scarif. Uh, but there is still hope in it. I think all the characters are, are they know the choice they made. And I think what's powerful about Jin's journey is she is doing this for the galaxy. She, it is a big galactic uh, problem that she's trying to address. But it's also personal that she chose this and she chose you know, not to turn away, but to do everything she possibly could. Mm-hmm. And so in, in no way is it a happy ending, mm-hmm. 
but it is a hopeful ending, right? Because she knows that she did everything she possibly could and that it seems like she and Cassian are at peace because they know that they made that choice and, you know, no one could ever look back and go, did they give in to fear? They did everything they possibly could. Every one of those characters did, and you're right, because that that the, the musical piece playing at the end, your, your father would be proud, is without a doubt uh, one of my favorite Star Wars pieces of music. And, and I didn't even realize, and I've told that story before, of, yeah, I don't know, Rogue One, yeah, it was my favorite. Giacchino's yeah, good, but then I heard that song one day and was like, oh, God, yeah, what, what is, is this from Force Awakens? I can't remember. Oh, God, it's Rogue One. That's right. And it is one of those, if you're of a, a particular ilk like I am and you like listening to sad music because it makes you feel happy that you're sad, you know, all right, <laughs> give me a, a, a depressed man with an acoustic guitar. It, it has that vibe to it for me, for me, where it is it is sad, but there is great release and relief in their faces. I think you're right. That's why I'm glad it isn't a, a kiss. Uh, you know, was there some sort of tension between them at times? Sure, absolutely. And if the series went on, Maybe they'd have an, an explosive, fun relationship we all could have uh, watched them banter over, all right? But I'm glad it didn't turn to that. It, I'm glad it turned to two people in that moment looking at each other going, yep, this is it, but I'm glad we're here uh, in, in a way. You know what I mean? There, there's great peace in the, that yeah. particular ending. There, with with, uh, with Baze Malbus uh, and, uh, and Sheard Emway, I think there's a great uh, peace there as well as... As as friends and Wheels of the Force, Guardians of the World, like there's there that there uh, the K two S one pulls on my heartstrings sometimes more than any of them. I've talked about that before. Uh, the lights going out. Um, uh, yeah, I think you're right, and and that's why it works. Come come on with the music, and then you you transition right to Vader, and it and it still works for me about how it, you still have to find those moments of of peace, solace, and in, introspection and hope even though the darkness is still swirling around you. It's literally flying above them. It's literally killing them, and it's still going. It didn't end it yet. Yeah. Yet. I mean, yeah, it, it's such a powerful uh, just literalization of the theme of Vader is uh, fear and anger and darkness, and he is literally marching down a hallway chasing this little bit of data that is hope, uh, and, you know, he doesn't quite catch it, and because of that, we have Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot there. I'm so, yeah, sorry. I want to watch I want to rewatch, uh, rewatch uh, Rogue One today cuz even even that and then and there's that great moment with um with Radis when I think he, he sees the, the scarf is hit with the beam and you know, may the force be with you Rogue One. I think in that moment too Radis feels he might be dead as well. And, yeah. and and they're choosing it and that's why it moves me as well. Um everything about that those characters in that moment it, it is they're all feeling it and they're all feeling it and uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we will uh we will uh put down a flight of skywalkers for the bravery and hope of Rogue One <laughs> and we'll uh take a quick break and be back to talk a little bit about hope in the sequel trilogy. And we are back to continue our discussion of hope in Star Wars, and we're going to dive into the sequel trilogy. There are many interconnected threads of hope in the sequel trilogy and explicit uses of the word. And we're going to untangle all the ideas about hope a little bit uh, from one another so we can kind of discuss them. So I want to start at the beginning of the sequel trilogy, Ken. The word hope is not explicitly used in The Crawl of The Force Awakens, uh, but here's my pitch. The Crawl centers everything around Luke, the First Order wants to find him out of fear that he will stop them. Uh, and Leia and the Resistance want to find him out of hope that he can help stop the First Order. So my first question is just, do you agree with that <laughs> reading? And if so, how does that uh, frame evolve the ideas of the original trilogy? How does the sequel trilogy look at the original trilogy and, and take that next step? It just really puts a fine point on it for me. No, I agree with that. Absolutely. I, you know... You and I have talked often about some one of our little favorite moments. And so it's not kind of some of the stuff with Snoke about Skywalker, I presume. Yeah, yeah, that's some great stuff. It's just it's constant. And and to your point of hope versus fear, there it is. It's in it's in the main event kind of status here. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the things I've always really loved about the storytelling of the sequel trilogy, starting with The Force Awakens. It gets more explicit in Last Jedi, we'll talk about, but just that y- y- Snoke, even Snoke as Palpatine's puppet, the First Order, Kylo, whatever, like, you guys could just get on to taking over the galaxy, but you're so afraid of Luke Skywalker. Uh, whereas I feel like more Leia and the Resistance is, like, we have very limited uh, resources. We're, we're starting in a little bit where New Hope started of, like, we need everything we can get. We really need Luke. Uh, just the way they, that, you know, we hear in Rogue One that Mon Mothma is like, yeah, the war's gonna come. What about your Jedi friend? Um, so, I, you know, I think it definitely you have fear and hope. Um, but going from that point, do you think it's the same as A New Hope? Do you think it's different in any way? I think it's slightly different and bigger. And this is uh, what we talk about often here. And I definitely mentioned a lot of just Luke. Luke being the Obi-Wan of the galaxy. And then you and I have had those discussions about the victory in the end in episode nine is, is from the people where it needed to be. And the, the victory in, ep, in episode six is for the people, not necessarily. It started from the people, uh, uh, you know, uh, with Infants and SNL's people rising up, but it becomes a militaristic action that we see in Rogue One, and it is for the people, and and now it's by the people, and I think that's the lesson uh, of the sequel trilogy: is you are, we are all part of this. We're all part of this journey. We all have to choose hope versus fear, perhaps daily, and and you're in this fight, and you need your heroes, you need that inspiration, you need those stories. You need leaders, as Poe talks about. I think that's valuable, too. Good people will fight if they're led, not because they're sheep that need to be led, but just, like, it's hard to do it on your own. That's how they, they need make you win, right? Zori yeah, they it. need inspiration and hope. Yeah. 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 And, and so that's why I was going to, to Luke wasn't just for Ray. It was for everybody, and, 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 then, and that's what's there for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, the all great ideas, and and I think they all are interconnected throughout the sequel trilogy. I think what I like uh, about Force Awakens, the way it kicks it off, of like the Force Awakens in in particular, the the title, the Force Awakens, it it absolutely is about the film. There's literally been an awakening, uh, says Snow. Gray awakens. Uh, R two awakens. The Falcon awakens. Uh, everybody is trying to awaken Luke. That's the whole point. Um, it, but there's also that real world of like you know star wars is back you know Mm -hmm. your old heroes are back but also there's this new generation and framing that first film is is looking for the past to save the future definitely has these echoes of leia looking for obi-wan in a new hope Mm -hmm. but in a new hope i think there's this power of leia's looking for a guy she's looking for a general who served her father during the clone wars yeah, he's a Jedi, but she's looking for a guy to help her finish this mission. Mm. And explicitly in The Force Awakens, people are concerned about Luke for himself, but people are even more concerned about Luke as a seed, right? Uh, that, that this idea that if Luke comes back, the Jedi will come back. Leia's looking at it from a perspective of hope, of not only will Luke come back, but the rest of the galaxy will see that, uh, that maybe other heroes will emerge because of that. And really explicitly, uh, you know, Snoke and, and the gang, <laughs> are mm-hmm. like, if Skywalker returns, the Jedi might return. And we can't allow even the possibility. So where Obi-Wan is, he's, uh, you know, he is Leia's only hope on that mission Luke is really even right at the beginning centered as if this, not just this guy, not just this Jedi master comes back, but if, if this symbol of heroism and action, uh, taking action and, and power comes back, then that's going to inspire people. And Leia's like counting on it and the First Order's dreading it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Desperately dreading it, right? Desperate. Yeah. So it immediately hooks into what what you're talking about that uh, I think the sequel trilogy develops a lot of this is a, a story about everybody taking responsibility. It kind of starts off that way by saying, we're not just afraid of the hero coming back. We're afraid of all the people he will inspire. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that takes us right into Last Jedi becoming, I think those ideas are present in Force Awakens, but then Last Jedi gets really explicit about that and explicit about the word hope. Uh, the opening crawl says that Leia and the Resistance are certain 
that Jedi Master Luke Skywalker will return and restore a spark of hope to the fight. Uh, once the story actually begins, Ray continues to, to push Luke to get involved by saying, hey, Leia sent me, Ray, here to this island, to you, Luke, with hope. Uh, even R2 gets in on the fun and, and replays the old message. Do you think this argument of hope works on Luke and why? Is, is it hope, partially, that brings him back into the galaxy? Yeah, I, yeah. I'm trying to think how I uh, phrase exactly what I'm thinking. There's a little bit of, um, for him, it's, it's a reconnecting to it uh, and, and reminding that, you know, he might have extinguished his own hope, but it's, it's, it's more than him right now and, and how much it means to others and how much he needs to take action and step into that in his own way, different conversations. But yeah, so I think it does. I'm, gosh, I'm trying to figure out what communicate can broadcast I think within <laughs> my heart versus what it is. Yes. It, it, it's so it's not so simple of he's like, Oh yes. Hope will save the day. It's a little like, hear me out of like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to have hope. Hell, I was <laughs> hope. That's valuable. And I can't let myself lose that. I need to reconnect with that. We all need yeah. to reconnect with that in ourselves some days. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think you're saying some great stuff. I think there's the real practical level of Ray saying that to Luke is what kind of cracks him open of, you know, Ray saying you at least she sent me here with hope. And, and if you're not going to come back, she at least deserves to know why. So like yeah. he takes that first half step of going like, OK, I'll tell you why I don't think I should come back. or I don't think why the Jedi should come back. Um, so I think hope just it, it's literally the idea of hope that opens the door to Ray being able to even have a conversation uh, with Luke and for Luke to start uh, analyzing uh, what's been going on. And and I think, you know, we we get to see these connections between uh, Ray and young Luke, where she's young and naive and, and thinks it's all about fighting. Right. Of Like, mm -hmm. I need you to come back and start the new Jedi uh, because Kylo Ren is very powerful with the dark side of the force. You know, and he's seen his young, naive self in Ray, and he's resenting that because he has lost his hope. Um, but for me, the real key thing that I think you said is he's thinking about it for himself. And I think what's happening for a lot of the film is Luke is so disappointed in himself that in this moment of crisis, he, he had weakness for a moment and he ignited the blade for just a second you know, after seeing all of the devastation that Kylo would bring and he just so fears himself. He fears that his actions will only make things worse like that one moment of failure did. So I think he's really thinking about himself mm -hmm. and is he spending more time with Ray? Ray's working on him and she's saying, well, like the galaxy might need a legend. So she's planning that idea. But I also, but I just need someone to help me. And I'm asking you, to help me. I'm asking you to, you know, pass on your wisdom uh, to the next generation. And I think Yoda really confronts Luke about his his fears and about his failures and, and about forgiving himself. And we, we talk about that a lot. And I think that's really powerful. But I also think it's important that Yoda says, you know, lost Ben Solo, you did uh, lose Ray. We cannot. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's an important line where it clicks to Luke of like, I've been thinking about myself. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking about how I've lost hope, how I made a mistake, how I fear I will make another mistake. But this isn't just about me. This is about me being like old Ben. This is about me passing that torch of hope. So there is all this great stuff about being a legend. Uh, there is all this great stuff about uh, him uh, uh, forgiving himself enough for his failure with Ben to move forward and for getting past his fear. But I also think it's this real acceptance that like, oh, yeah, hope isn't just naive. Leia's right. Ray's right. Yoda's right. Uh, hope is what you need to even start the battle to keep moving forward. So I'll let myself be that hope. I'll let myself be that legend because the galaxy needs it and because Ray needs it and because Leia needs me to, to communicate that message. And suddenly it's not about him. Mm -hmm. Hope is, I think, what makes him go, okay, I need to process my feelings uh, uh, for myself of the, the mistake I made and the fear I have. But what I need to give to the galaxy and what I have to give is hope. And, and, and even after all of that, you still have that to give, you know, you didn't, 
you lost contact with it, but but you didn't lose it. Yeah. And I like that there's a little bit of a de- depression that we've talked about before here on Star Wars, and, and it's a serious, serious thing, and 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 chemicals and 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 genes and all those kind of things too. But as someone who suffered to it, you know, you just so depression, you are so in on yourself, you're so looking inward. And sometimes uh, this is again very general, but a way to move forward is to, is to look outside yourself. And 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 Luke's depressed, man. He's depressed. He's the picture of it up there. Just look at that beard. And I think it's <laughs> important to remind to find, to reconnect with that hope and know that other people uh, still need you and and you're still valuable. That hold on for one more day, but also take action now today. Uh, it's all it's all it all falls falls into it for me. A lot of themes, but all dumps into the uh, the hope river. Yeah, yeah, and I just think it's such a great tradition of the Star Wars storytelling that I think happens in A New Hope. Uh, you know, help me, Obi Wan. You're my only hope. No, there's a new hope of Luke saying. You know, uh, it is really important to pass that that torch and inspire others. And and I can't lose Ray. We can't lose Ray. And I still have control over that. I can show her that you know the Jedi are needed. You do need somebody to you know take the metaphorical saber and stand uh, up uh, to the darkness. You know, and you don't always have to do it in a violent way. I mean, I've found a a nonviolent way to help in this situation. Um, and maybe I can't save Kylo, but I actually now have hope that someone else can. And I'm going to show all that to Ray, not just to the galaxy, but to Ray as well, because we can't lose Ray is, I think, a, a big part of Luke's victory in The Last Jedi and, and a victory of hope. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Uh, and, and, and also this generational thing of, of, of just having hope and faith in, in the generation behind you. Uh, and it, it being their fight and just uh, you're, you're still in the fight or you might be inspiring, uh, you know, those in the fight still, but uh, and just having the hope of, of the next day and it's uh, and it's in their hands too. It's, it's, uh, it's powerful as well. Yeah. Yeah. There was a great Twitter exchange. I might've mentioned it before when we were talking about hope uh, where uh, someone was saying, I don't know if I should keep kind of tweeting the same things about, you know, during dark and challenging times, you know, keep fighting, keep doing this. And then the person was like, I don't know if I should, what's the point of just saying that? Everybody knows it. And I keep saying it again. And somebody responded, um, and you might have more insight on this, Ken, of like, you know, there are professional like uh, coaches <laughs> in major league sports who keep standing there saying, remember to run. <laughs> <laughs> remember to touch that base, remember to do a good job. And like that, we all need that. We all need that reminder to keep on the path and, and achieve what we're trying to achieve. Yeah. It's, it's really hard. Uh, and you don't know what your actions, um, you don't know who it's reaching. Oh, uh, I'll throw it. This is not super direct, but it's a, it's a baseball thing. Uh, uh, uh Jolton Joe DiMaggio, uh, late great, uh, Yankee Clipper used to play hard every day of his career, even when he was broken down and injured towards the end. And then some reporter asked him why, and he says, because, there's and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but but there's a good chance today someone is seeing me play for the first time, and I've got mm. to give them that. And I think, yeah, you might not know, you might have your head down, but some little tweet or something you say in a podcast or something you used to say to someone at a grocery store might it might hit them in a way that you don't know and you might never know. Uh, and I think that's uh, uh, part of what lesson uh, Luke is feeling a little bit in Last Jedi too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I had never heard that uh, quote. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Speaking of great uh, quotes, we, we have to talk about this when we're talking about Hope. Uh, the Last Jedi includes a quote that is attributed to Leia and her leadership. Hope is like the sun. If you only believe in it when you see it, you'll never make it through the night. Do you like this quote? Do you agree with it? Do you find it helpful? What are your feelings on this one? I really, so I really do like it. It sounds uh, like a great song lyric from like the uh, mid two thousands. I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, it, it sounds great. Um, I love it more than I love its delivery. Not not on Holdo or anything. Uh, uh, it it it's a long quote, so it's like a it's it's a it's a long moment for me. But I, that sounds like I don't like the moment. I really do love the quote, and I love it. Fits it. on a poster, but you got to use a smaller font. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're exactly what I mean. It's like, and 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 it, and it works. And it really does work. Um, and and I do. And it it does make a lot of sense. It's it's slightly. Uh, I, I make sometimes jokes about bumper sticker philosophy or dime store philosophy of like, uh huh, yeah, yeah. That's that makes sense. But going back to what you and I were just talking about, even just a simple little catchphrase, it works, man. The reason that's the reason we have these catchphrases. It's the reason George is like. 
uh, let me make uh, tough times. Let me make a space saga and some simple direct messages. And we need that sometimes. And it makes a lot of sense. It, it's like, oh, yeah, that is hope. Yeah, I think I like it because it gets to a little bit a little bit of what we were talking about in Rogue One of on one hand this quote does does sound a little bit like it's on a motivational poster and there's you know a cute cat and it feel it you can I know it means a lot to people so I don't mean to be dismissive. I'm going to say oh, good yeah. things about this quote. Uh I think there's a risk of seeing it as kind of pat of just like yep, got it. It's a that's a motivational phrase. But what I really like about it is it kind of drills towards that idea of yeah hope is really hard to have because mm -hmm. the the time that you need to have it is when you're utterly surrounded by darkness and you have one tiny little candle and there's this part of you and part of the world that wants to say great job idiot you you lit one candle what did you do and like well that's the point that's the point is to try to do something it, it, it's i think it gets to the how hard it, it can be to have hope of like we don't have hope when everything's always great because the, 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 that's just reality when we need hope is when things are are at their worst and it's at their worst where you're tempted to be Noah Jabel and go yep everything's bad uh but you have that hope that it can get better that there's even the possibility of it get, getting better that you believe in that light uh, even when it's not there I think is it's really getting towards the acknowledging how hard it is, acknowledging that hope is this hard thing to come by sometimes, uh, but also being really pragmatic about like that. But that's that's how we're going to make things better. Yeah, yeah. The, the simple stuff. Yeah, you know, you, we are. You light a candle in, in the window. We are we are only one candle, but we're one of many. Yes, yeah, I put it on a poster, but it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, Last Jedi makes a distinction between hope and sort of rash actions. Uh, there's a lot in Last Jedi that's about hope. We're going to keep talking about it. Uh, Poe does his daring raid, his thrilling raid at the beginning of the movie on the uh, dreadnought Fulminatrix, but that doesn't seem to represent hope. How do you wrestle with that? Oh, no, I love that you mentioned this. Uh, I, 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 yeah, because I don't necessarily wrestle with it. It's, it is a fine line. But this is one of the things I love about this movie and, and, and that opening sequence. It is such a great Star Wars heroic moment. One snub fighter against a dreadnought and we're going to do this and all we need is to believe. And yay, it works out at a tremendous cost and a cost that maybe in that moment, Leia would tell you, we didn't need to take. We didn't need to. We couldn't experience that cost and it hurt us more. Uh, and um, and, I, and, and it, again, it is a fun, you're threading a, a real thin needle there. And that, but that's the lesson because I think Poe needs to learn it. This is like we gotta have hope, right? Yeah, yeah. Hope is a lot of things. It's not necessarily charging in, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, not I want to say stupidly because it's also brave, brave actions from Poe. But um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I know what you, I know what you're saying. I'm probably explaining it a little wrong, but I've, I just love that sequence because it's it's a, such a hero's moment. But the movie's like, yeah, yeah, but but that's that's not that was too costly. That wasn't heroic. That was, that was, that was foolish in a way. And, 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 uh, you got to analyze it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it, it's this great idea of kind of, uh, tying hope and wisdom together. Uh, we've seen this, uh, storytelling in star Wars where, uh, a desperate one in a million gamble that is hope in it's necessary against horrific odds. You know, that is rogue one. That is, uh, the death star trench run. Uh, and, and it's really inspiring. And I think that's what's interesting about Last Jedi for to tie kind of hope and wisdom is like, it's not, you know, hopeful anytime the odds are really bad and you're mm -hmm. trying something really dangerous. Uh, it, you really need to know where you're, you're pointed toward and what you're doing. And, and I like the lesson in The Last Jedi that this is, uh, it's brave, it's daring, it, it accomplishes something, but it's off mission because what we're doing right now is we have this tiny flickering light of hope that is the resistance and we are trying to survive. And you know, Holdo lays it out really clear, like that's our mission right now. That's all we're trying to do is survive. Leia is really cognizant of needing to pass on that torch, you know, which is why she's saying, you know, you know, dead heroes, no leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like that it really makes that distinction of like, hey, look, Star Wars it does absolutely have these triumphant moments where you, you risk everything. Uh, but you should also have some wisdom attached to that and know, know what you're trying to accomplish when. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. There's I, I've let, I've seen even some real world examples. I don't even want to get into here, but I've had those conversations with, with employees in my past of like, hey, uh, look at what look what I did, Ken. I, we we did what we we're supposed to do, and I'm like, and and what did it cost us? It wasn't worth the cost. You holding to um, standards or what you felt was justice in that moment. It, it, look at the bigger picture. I'm not saying Poe did that out of ego um, or that he needed it. Like, praise me, I did the day. I really think it's coming from a good spot. I think Poe is a, is a great hearted character. Um, so don't get me wrong. But I, I think there's that's part of what Leia says that, that you maybe think about it with the, the dead heroes, no leaders. Like, just wisdom. You keep seeing wisdom, and I think that's that's wise, sir. Um, <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Slow down. Think this through. Sometimes you don't you don't have time. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry. It's it. There's probably we could probably do a whole episode on on the opening sequence, or at least part of the episode. But uh, um, uh, yeah, yeah. It's not quite the hope that that Le- that they need or Leia's talking about. Yeah, yeah. I think Ilya is really uh, aware that the, this tiny band of resistance needs to spread hope and inspiration through the galaxy, and blowing up that one ship is not going to do it. Uh, they, so they need to survive right now. So I feel like in in her way, like Leia is fighting for hope and kind of knowing that's the mission right now. Hope is the mission. Yeah. Um, so uh, going back to Ray's individual story in the Last Jedi, uh, Ray resists the call to be the new hope of this generation a couple times in last Jedi. She literally tries to give the Skywalker blade to Luke right at the beginning. Uh, the Skywalker blade, I think is kind of the, the symbol of hope of being the next generation. Uh, she tries to give it to Luke again, right before she leaves Octo. And then she leaves Octo to kind of symbolically try to give it to Ben thinking she can turn Kylo, uh, back to the light, back to Ben. And he can inspire he can be the hero who returned to the light and inspire uh, the resistance in the galaxy uh, to fight. So she keeps kind of trying to give away uh, the, her legacy of being the new hope uh, and finally reclaims it toward the end of the film when she retakes it, uh, the lightsaber from uh, Kylo and, and goes to rescue her friends on crate. What do you think it says though about hope that she resists for the majority of the movie to take the mantle of being the new hope. It says a lot because, you know, rejecting the call is so uh, built into the, the, the myth structure, right. And, and Campbell and all those things that you can say to, to, to make yourself or make me seem smarter. I'm not, but uh, the, you know, that it's built into that. And it, and it's to me still just from a storytelling standpoint is, is some of the more interesting stuff, um, you know, fade in, Here's a here's the hero's blade. You want to go sit? Whoa! Yep, there you go. Yep, you do. Okay, I love <laughs> dealing with the doubt of it because a symbol of hope. And look at look at the lesson. That's part of what Luke is like. I was a symbol of hope. That didn't turn out too good. And you got to deal with that. It's very realistic. Uh, and the fact that you know she is uh, not the maybe not the chosen one, but she is the hero called into action. Which is why, to me, that supersedes, you know, Ray from nowhere is powerful. Ray uh, choosing not to be a Palpatine, but choosing to stay as nowhere before choosing another family. All those kind of themes you and I could talk about for days and days. I, I think n- none of those actually kind of supersede the idea that she is the hero chosen. And it's hard. And it's, again, the it's easy to serve when there's no cost. It's easier. To, it's very easy to say, we need help. Can you help? take here's the hope mantle thank you i'll follow and sometimes we are called to lead sometimes we are the one providing the hope and that is difficult and and to have these movies to see where she goes how she battles and runs away from it or thinks she finds one thing and then constantly consistently faced with what you really are is so powerful that you might not even comprehend it and it might hurt if it's used wrong you still have to find your way forward and choose to use your powers for good and, 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 and see it and see what you can do with it, even though it's not quite clear to you. That, that's, that's the, this hope uh, bumper sticker. Uh, it's it's uh, going to get you through the dark night type of thing, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No. And I, I, I love that, that you're thinking through kind of uh, how, how hope is calling to her, right? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Leia's raised in, in the battle uh, in, in her own way. She's raised to be a, a leader you know, she literally, uh, you know, sends this message out to old Ben Kenobi to return to his roots. And, uh, and old Ben physically gives Luke a lightsaber and some information, some debatable information, as we've debated, some certain yeah. point of view information. Uh, poor Ray, a lightsaber is calling to her. 
weird visions are calling to her. Dreams of an island are calling to her. You know, uh, it, it's this. She's got a really difficult journey because it is like this. Uh, she truly doesn't know what to do with it. She doesn't know what the power means. Uh, you know how it makes her feel. All those things. Uh, and I think it, it's understandable that she's really, really wrestling with that. And I think what what I get out of it is a viewer since she doesn't have the super clear, like she's got some guidance from Han. She's got a little bit of guidance uh, from Leia, but by this point in her journey, Luke, the guy who could really give her guidance won't do it. So then she's getting some mixed messages uh, Mm -hmm. from dangerous Kylo uh, slash Ben. Uh, So it's totally understandable. And I relate to it from this perspective of hope is, is frightening. It is a response it's a real responsibility in Ray's dealing with that. Like what, what is it to, for me to, can I hold this responsibility and I've got all this power. Is it dangerous for me to hold this responsibility? But just from a kind of really simple, you know, uh, storytelling analogy, I think it's this great reminder that when we look at it as adventure, yeah, of course we always want to all want to be the knight with the sword. Like you're talking about, but when we look at it in a slightly deeper way of like, but what does that mean? What if you fail everyone? What if you get people in danger? What if you get hurt? It's scary. It's really, really scary to be the knight with the sword and to hold up that hope and be that inspiration. Yeah, I, and I love that we get to spend more time in that doubt with Ray. It, it, it's really powerful to me. You you often say how you, you were inspired and want to grow up to be like Ray, and that's such a great sentiment. Uh, for you and our gray beards to have, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, because I, I think that Luke rejects the call in one movie, new, you know, episode four, because Lucas didn't know if he was going to have more of the story, right? Who knows? He may have, may have spent more time with it if he knew. Uh, he, he, Luke rejects it and then picks it up. And again, speaking of some generalities, it's like, great. I saved the day. I have heard, I have heard the call and got a medal. And I think then he asked us, he spends some time learning what that, what that means now to be a hero, right? The, the, the great warrior ends up different on, on the throne. Yeah. Room. That's his journey. And, and Ray's is, 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 is wrestling with different layers of, of that, which I think is more powerful for this day and age, because we are in a more complicated time. Maybe information is thrown all over your, 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 your head, your ears, your face. You just bash with information and chances to be a hero or chances not to be a hero. And, and and we are sometimes a little bit more of a, a cynical time, though. The seventies, that's where I think cynicism uh, really started to get popular uh, there. Um, <laughs> and Lucas is going with a different feeling. So, so uh, this is of this time, and and you have to focus and and really see it. And 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 we could be potentially afraid of more afraid of your own power uh, and, and what that could be. And and I, so I think there's more timely. So that because of that, all I'm all I'm saying is I. I love the idea that we get to spend some time with Ray rejecting the call in different ways at different times. And yeah. It makes her, her journey more powerful to me where she ends up. Yeah. Yeah. Cause she, she definitely has, she's, you know, self-reliant. She's already a good fighter. She is uh, tapping into the force. She does want to make a difference, but she's having a hard time taking that next step to being like, no, we don't need Luke. We don't need Ben. You have the power. You take the, the saber. And I like that you said doubt, right? Because I think that's what, to me is is powerful and different about last jedi is we spend time with a lot of the characters doubt and we really get into the the dark scary truth of it so that by the end of the film uh when there are these multiple affirmations of hope you really feel it uh i feel like what happens towards the end of the film is you know poe repeats what he learned from leia and holdo and he sees the resistance as the spark that will light the fire, that will burn the f- First Order down. He's he's recognized, oh, this is the fight we're in. That's what we're trying to do is keep the spark of hope alive uh, long enough that it could become a fire. Uh, and Ray, I think, recognizes her power when she takes the saber uh, back from Kylo and she goes to Creighton. She lifts those rocks to save her friends and she really sees, I have power. It matters, uh, you know. I should use it. I need to use it. I need to be, uh, you know, the next hope. And, and Luke's brave stand on crate. You know, he is, you know, really letting the galaxy see him is one person with a lightsaber standing up against the whole first order in, in that, you know, twist on what he said at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, we get to see 
that, hey, this immediately works. This uh, tale, this legend of hope is immediately told by Oni Hosea. And we see it inspire Tamiri Blagg. And he looks up the stars and dreams and holds that broom like a saber. So we get all of these affirmations of hope, of this battle in Last Jedi to keep hope alive matters because look how it's already affecting uh, the next generation who is picking up this idea of like, yes, hope is this delicate spark and we need to, to keep it alive so we can bring other people uh, to the cause. Mm-hmm. For you, what, is it, what does it mean that in The Last Jedi, the victory of our heroes is keeping hope alive? To me, it means it's a, a more complete victory than just a simple uh, toppling of a, of a government or a, a, a victory on a, on a battlefield. It's something that goes way, way deeper. And that's why I, I just am moved by a lot of the stuff in Rise of Skywalker because it's a culmination of a lot of those journeys, including Padme's and, and including Luke's, Obi-Wan's, Yoda's, all of them. But um, it, it is, it is uh, you know, little, even, even with Poe and some of his mistakes and everything, just sometimes, sometimes the victory you need, not necessarily the victory you seek, is just surviving to the next day and knowing that, tomorrow you you can do the same you know that that belief and and what you're saying of the 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 victory of our heroes is just you use that word just keeping hope alive um on a on a stat sheet you know it's like all they got was hope man (laughs) that is going to carry on and it can carry on and it can carry on and that one victory can absolutely inspire thousands upon millions upon generations after generations and 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 that's way more complete um, yeah than just uh Yub nub, we toppled something. Because, because oh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm putting as you and I like to engage with the story presented and a living document. I always say I, I view the Star Wars story as like this living history document. And to go back and just like they won, man. The Ewoks were dancing and the fireworks, and everyone was yay. That was great. And then like the next morning, it was like you know, not saying next morning, but like within the next year or so, it's like kind of back to normal. And that's kind of what we all can deal with uh uh you know or we all can be saddled with sometimes we just do that ourselves like all right we got through that everything's great back to normal it's like and and, but that's gonna that the same problems are gonna creep up again if you didn't really solve it so so the victory is is a little different but just to have to know that the the hope that should should the the darkness arise again you know that you have hope that that's what makes it a long longer lasting victory to me yeah yeah, I think that's really, really great. Uh, great idea of like, yeah, original trilogy. It is about uh, Luke and Leia and, and Han and Lando and, and them, them all becoming uh, a generation of new hope and they restore peace and justice. But peace and justice is always going to be uh, threatened mm-hmm. in, in a big galactic story, <laughs> you know, in, in real life, uh, on an interpersonal level. It's always going to be uh, an ongoing battle. And I think, yeah, the sequel trilogy is, is very aware of that. I think I've said this before about Last Jedi. I think uh, I understand people who uh, who are challenged by it or or don't like it because it it really strongly criticizes and challenges some of the fundamentals of Star Wars. But for me, why I like The Last Jedi is it it puts all these ideas in crisis so those ideas can come out victorious Mm -hmm. and hope being such a central theme of Star Wars. I love that hope is one of the many ideas of Star Wars that's kind of put through, uh, that has to pass through the dark night without the sun (laughs) Mm -hmm. in order to come, so the sun can come out at the end. And I feel like the fact that hope is the victory Mm -hmm. and it is the older generation who's trying to share that. It's Leia who's trying to share that. It's Luke who relearns that and and takes this big action uh, that creates hope uh, throughout the, the galaxy. It really reaffirms that this central idea of hope is the first step. It is the first and necessary step. You are not going to fight any kind of darkness without hope. And our heroes all know that, you know, Yoda and Leia and and Luke comes to reaffirm it, that if anything else is going to be possible, hope has to survive because it really matters that much. Mm -hmm. And it really is the first step to doing anything uh, uh, productive, to uh, inspiring others to join your cause. You have to have hope. And it's, you know, in danger in Last Jedi of going out and triumphantly at the end, the spark is saved. 
Yeah, man. Uh, again, uh, victory is great, but uh, there will be defeats. There will always be defeats, and what's going to get you through it, 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 it? It's the hope you earned in, the, in that previous victory, kind of. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's move on then uh, as we begin to wrap up our conversation here to the rise of Skywalker. I think the rise of Skywalker uh, really follows through on the hope uh, theme when our heroes are at their most desperate, uh, the spark that they've been carrying, uh, that they kept alive in Last Jedi, they carry through into Rise of Skywalker, and we get to actually really see the spark be lit into that fire that Holdo and Poe describe. And in particular, we see the, the, the spark being lit into a fire by other people joining other people appearing to help our heroes uh, raise hope is rewarded by the support of both ben solo and then the voices of the jedi past uh, pose hope is rewarded by lando and the people's armada showing up at exegol luke and leia's hope in the next generation is rewarded by seeing ray and poe and finn and rose and jenna and babu frick and everybody all take the mantle to to stand up against fear and tyranny does this resolution of the hope theme work for you and are there parts that you find more affecting than others does it make sense to you as a is a connection to last jedi uh, yeah it makes sense as a connection to to all the all the stories that, that came before it and that's something you and i've talked about it and and to me quite frankly it is um out of order a connection to 1977 to say uh, you know generations ago we were all all introduced to Hope, hope versus fear, hope in a dark time, hope in a political, uh, a politically tumultuous time, a politically uncertain time, a socially uncertain time. We were introduced to the simple concept of hope and finding hope and hanging on to hope. And here, this saga, the stories in this uh, franchise will go on. We'll have more. We'll be able to dance with these themes again. But that saga that we all were introduced to as a, as a pop culture uh, consuming world, it all comes down to this and, and, and the belief in hope, the pursuit of hope and the victory of hope is found in all these stories and it's found on all these levels. And, and, and it, uh, I, I cite the, the Admiral Gris, it's not a Navy, it's people. It, it, it moves me, uh, Lando, uh, you know, showing up, but there's, but there's more of us, Poe, there's more of us. Uh, it, it is, it is everything, man. It, it, it is, it is the journey uh, that we've gone through. 42 years now, about 43 years ago, you know, as time moves forward so fast. Um, it ties to that to me, not even in story. I mean, in story ties to it, but just as a fandom, it ties to that emotionally. And that's why I, I, I'm so moved. I think moved by that movie on so many levels, but, but I'm moved by the Han and Kylo cause I'm a Han guy and I did it, but I'm, I'm moved in a way that I wasn't moved in other movies about the fight, about the, about, about the, pursuit of, of, of peace, justice in the galaxy. Right. And I, I, I'm, this movie moves me more than any others because I think it, it, the, the weight of the journey hits me in these moments. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh, well said. I lost track of how many times we said, well said, but well said. Yeah. I, I think I, I really love it from the perspective of the sequel trilogy. Uh, and you know, we get introduced to all of these themes uh, of the, the torch being passed in force awakens. We really get introduced uh, double down on those ideas in Last Jedi and particularly making it about this idea of hope, of keeping the spark alive. And I totally see the just great thematic connection between Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker is Last Jedi is keeping the spark uh, alive so the fire can be lit. And that gives me, uh, I think that's why it's more emotionally affecting to me because I've, I've been through this journey with Poe. He learned this lesson and he's trying so hard in Rise of Skywalker to hang on to his hope. Rey has accepted that she is the new hope and she is trying so hard to find the right path. And on this bigger picture, and they're rewarded, you know, and, and those moments are super powerful. And I love what you're saying about what that theme of the rewards of hope is, how that's talking to the first film, A New Hope. And I think for me, uh, what is partially powerful about Rise of Skywalker is it's not afraid of hope. It's not afraid of saying, what is Star Wars about? Well, it, it's about all these dark things. It's about all these complex themes. It has all these different ideas and themes and inspirations. But when you really look at A New Hope back in, in 77, Star Wars in 1977, A New Hope in 1981, mm -hmm. uh, what's it about? It's about these beliefs that, 
you can look at as naive and overly simplistic. It is a belief in hope. It's a belief that the individual must make choices, but they're always stronger when they're surrounded by friends. It's the belief that if you hold on to hope and you set an example of hope, that it will inspire others and everyone will come together to make a difference. It is such a celebration of the ideas that are so easily written off by pessimism or fear or negativity. And it's just so clear in celebrating, you know, individual choice, friendship, hope, everyone coming together to make a difference. And it's a great summation, conclusion of of the sequel trilogy, but I agree with you that I think in that in those really specific ways, it's talking to the very first film. Yeah, it communicates with the heart of it. And and look, there's some, you know, episode nine, you could you could go down a a, a laundry list of maybe they could have done that. Eh, maybe this person should have shown up more and and that. And and I tell you what, all of it is is valid and open to discussion in all the movies, particularly in episode nine. Totally get it. Totally get it. A lot went into making that movie. A lot we don't even know. And they had to get it done and they did. But I, I think you and I keep going back to, Joseph, is what does nine say? It, it has these lessons of uh, no matter what you felt you did that you can't overcome, hope can still be at the end of that. Uh, no matter what you were and what your job was, your title, your goals, you can, you can, you can change. And, and tomorrow you can choose hope. Uh, no matter the losses, uh, no matter how, uh, how lost you yourself feel and you feel alone in the world against the tidal wave of darkness, uh, that's how they make you win. And you can choose th- hope through the end of it. And none of it is easy. And there's a cost to it. That's what the movie uh, from start to finish continues uh, uh, to me to convey and, and ties to, to what you, we talked about in 77. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you and I probably would have talked about it in 77. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. If we're a little older, maybe. <laughs> like, yeah, I got made that hope. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Baby four center. Yeah. I, I think then the, the final thing for me is just that um, I think it, Rise of Skywalker resonates with me emotionally and I know it doesn't for everybody and I and I really understand that and maybe part of that for me might just be the personal like I can I can lay out all of uh these sort of uh thematic ideas of how everything connects and lines up and and you know supporting evidence and all that but I think when I'm at my darkest I feel it's because I feel alone it it's because I feel like I only have so much power and I've used all of it in my my light my power that I have to use isn't enough and maybe I was an idiot maybe as a fool for even trying and Rise of Skywalker takes our characters that place and then all of these people come in to say you you were not wrong to hold on to that hope you were not wrong to hold on to that light and you were never alone you you held on to that light and we're all here and, and you you did the right thing to hold on to hope, you know? Mm, yep. Yep. That is the victory. Yeah. So, uh, final question. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think Lando delivered a speech of hope? What do you, what is it that you think he said to the galaxy to truly get convince them, uh, to come to their own rescue at Exegol? He said, uh, Luke Skywalker, and then dropped the mic and left, and that's what everyone wants, right? Um, and look, I would have loved some kind of message, just kind of reference to Luke and some of that stuff. I get that complaint. I'm joking. Um, I, I honestly, this seems silly. I, I kind of think Lando kind of said a version of the stuff you and I have just said in the last few minutes. <laughs> it doesn't matter who you were. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter. You can find hope. And we need to, because if we don't, we're snuffed out for good and, and, and darkness wins and we are all going to choose light and we're going to choose the victory of hope. And just the, the step towards hope is the victory. Take that step with me. I'm Lando Carusian. Vote for me. <laughs> I love the idea that he maybe has a podcast now and he uh, played them a chunk of the Chronicles of Calrissian. <laughs> totally. Yeah. No, I, I so love the image and the idea of uh, of Luke's stand on crate being a, a spark of hope, and we certainly see that in in Tamari uh, Blag. Yeah, I think it uh, is. Yeah, and I think it's there, and I think other Star Wars storytelling will even even do even more with it. Uh, but when I really think about Lando and think about what we saw of Lando, like 
I almost wonder if Lando's like, all right, Galaxy, listen up. Mm -hmm. I used to be a scoundrel. (laughs) I used to have this little lush life I created for myself at a little place called Cloud City. And I don't think, I didn't think any of it really impacted me. Let me tell you what happened to Cloud City. (laughs) The whole galaxy is going to be Cloud City. You know, do you, do you want to be who I was or do you want to be who I am? You know? Yeah. 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 Do you want to be who I am? Ah, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm so fascinated someday to see if we're ever going to hear uh, Lando's great speech that fully uh, succeeded in, in lighting the spark of hope into a fire. Yeah, just a deleted scene of Lando and a holovid. <laughs> right? but to me, yeah, to me, to speak to, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't necessarily need it. I just, you felt it. You kind of get a sense of what he would have said. And I didn't want to see him go into a thousand worlds to, to say it, uh, or even a whole of it, jokes aside. It just, you know, Lando gets it because he tells, he tells Poe uh, important things and, and he feels it. And um, I, I don't know, it just, for me, it just, that, that moment works. The, 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 yeah. the, the, the arriving and the Star Wars main title theme playing connects even more back to what we first were exposed to uh, uh, different times for a lot of different generations, but the story of A New Hope. Yeah, and Poe literally flipping his X-wing up from a uh, place of darkness into this uh, this place of light, uh, mm-hmm. and seeing seeing the people's navy, uh, the people's armada is uh, is so great. And to give uh, you know uh, Poe and Finn full credit, I think their their speech as they get uh, the resistance ready uh, to take off, I think that's got a lot of the spirit of what Lando probably said to the galaxy. That that was a good message of hope as well. I agree. Any final thoughts on the idea of hope in Star Wars? No, I think a, a, a fun discussion. Um, I think a big theme, and it's it's perhaps the theme in Star Wars. Uh, we love diving into those themes, but a, a great time to be, discuss this one. Um, and and again, I don't think it's just for any particular week in real life. I think this is uh, why Star Wars goes on and will always have value because it 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 it, it preaches one simple. A lesson of hope over fear and and how you can get there. And that's valuable. That is great. So there's a lot more about hope that we can say, and we will in the future. Don't worry. But for now, that's uh, our look at hope in Star Wars. It is. If you want to find the podcast and connect with us, you can go on to Twitter at Force Center Pod. We are on Instagram. We are also on Facebook at Force Center Podcast and YouTube. Subscribe over there. Uh, always cooking up more things and deciding exactly what we want to do over there on that space. This was uh, always a podcast first, always kind of be a podcast first, but we understand the call to see our, uh, our uh, graying, our graying beards uh, over there. Uh, and uh, uh, we will get there and we already on there as well. So su- subscribe over on YouTube. It's my lesson um, uh, <laughs> Lesson for you all today. Podcasts available on anchor, iHeartRadio, Apple podcasts, Google podcasts, Stitcher, tune in and more, including Amazon music, merch available at tpublic.com slash user slash four center. And you can support us directly at patreon.com slash four center. You can also support us directly on anchor, or as I always say, just tell a friend about four center. That is sometimes all the support we need, but also visit patreon.com slash four center. Uh, you can go to <laughs> uh, or follow me at catnapsuck for all the crazy things I do. And uh, for you, Joseph, yeah, you can follow me on uh, social media, Twitter and Instagram at Joseph Scrimshaw. And you can go to my website, josephscrimshaw.com to find a bunch of other comedy adventures. But for now, for myself, for Ken, for the concept of hope and for all the new hopes that are out there and listening, you are not alone. This has been Force Center.